Welcome back. As we promised, we are going to speak about a very important sector of our economy, which is tourism. And our homework to propagate for Egypt. But does Egypt need more propaganda? Anyone in the world does not know much about Egypt as uh, a tourism hub. The answer is yes. But we are going to speak and in detail about participating in one of the most important international tourism fairs. And it's taking place in Madrid, in the Spanish capital. To uh, shed more light on that and to answer all questions regarding the issue, we are very much delighted to have with us live here in the studio, Mr. Ihab Kamil, our historian, researcher, and uh, expert in tourism. Thank you very much for being with us, sir, and a very good morning. Good morning. Let's start with this very simple question. Um, do, uh, are we really in need to participate in international exhibitions? Are we really in need to propagate for Egypt that way? What's the importance of doing so? The answer is yes and no. Yeah. Um, publicity, propagation for Egypt, I don't think we need it that much. Everyone knows Egypt as a touristic destination since a very long time ago. Mm -hmm. But when we participate in fairs like this, this is more like a business summit, mm -hmm. more than it's um, a way to propagate for Egypt. This is the place where you show your destination. This is your, this is a big veteran where you put your touristic product in front of countries which are far away because the V tour in Spain, it's not only for Spanish tourism, it's for the Latin tourism, Latin mm -hmm. America over there as well, which is a long haul we are very far from. Mm -hmm. Basically, most of the travel that comes from Latin America, it comes either through Spain or Portugal. Mm -hmm. So um, this is like a business summit. This is like an exhibition to exhibit our travel product in front of the tour operators and uh, the holiday makers of these countries. Mm -hmm. As you know, it's very important that we concentrate on this market. You have 23 Spanish-speaking countries in the whole world. Yes. Most of them... The United States itself. How many people in, in, in the United States are speaking um, Spanish? Speaking of this, I remember once uh. I was in the Spanish Cultural Center and they were having a map for the Spanish-speaking countries. Mm. And I looked at the map and I found that they had written Texas. Mm. I said, is that what I think it is? That's Texas. Texas, yeah. Texas, uh -huh. yes. They said, oh yes, this is a Spanish-speaking territory. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about 23 countries speaking Spanish between South America and Central America. And some of these countries, unfortunately, we don't have any direct airlines mm -hmm. to, so they come through either Spain or Portugal, mm -hmm. like Brazil. Brazil, on its own, it has half of the population of South America, and there are lots of holiday makers over there uh, from Brazil. I'll tell you something very surprising. You will find that there are more tour operators and holiday makers from Latin America in the FITO, more than um, the Sao Paulo exhibition in Brazil itself. So this is a golden opportunity, mm -hmm. especially that nowadays we are trying to retrieve our brand back, which was for a very long time ignored, which is cultural tourism. Mm -hmm. I've been saying this and I'm going to say it again. Our brand is not Sharm el Sheikh, it's not Hergada, it's not the beach holiday. This was my coming question, sir, regarding our homework before participating in such a fair or in such an event. We should focus on um, what you're saying, the cultural tourism, or they should be on equal foot with other kinds of tourism? They will never be on an equal foot. Uh -huh. um, we'll speak economically. Yes. Beach tourism <coughs> or the beach holidays, <coughs> they are cheap and they do not bring the expected income. Mm -hmm. While the cultural tourism, it's more expensive. The traveler, the quality of traveler, the segment of travelers it attracts, it's a different segment, it's higher in spending. Mm -hmm. It brings what we call the class A 
mm -hmm. traveler, which we want to attract and focus on. I'm not saying that the 13 million travelers that will come to Egypt, all of them will come to the cultural tourism, but I need to increase the portion of this uh, kind of travel because this is our real brand from like two or three million to five or six million. You will find then a big jump in the touristic revenue mm -hmm. from this kind of traveler. But isn't it, sir, uh, depending at least in a way on the age category? Because mm. I, I think you would find people who are that much interested in our culture of tourism. Um, I mean, the youth are going to think only about the, um, uh, the beaches uh, and, um, um, our, of course, our weather, our nature and stuff like that. Or would you correct is, me if I'm this, wrong? This is, this is not true. Mm -hmm. I've been in this business for more than 25 years, almost 30 years now. And I remember in the beginning when I was still young and uh, at the beginning of my career, I used to see lots and lots of young people coming from Belgium, Netherlands, Switzerland, coming to do this cultural part. Mm -hmm. And the beach part used to be like two or three days at the end of their program. Mm -hmm. And these were like what we call cheap holidays. They used to stay in three stars hotels. They travel by train, not necessarily a sleeper train, but mm -hmm. they, they, they travel by um, a seated train and come back with a sleeper train. This, those people I'm talking about, you were talking about an average age between 23 to 35, 36. Mm -hmm. You know, this is exactly what I wanted to hear because here I should focus a little bit on social media and how social media can play such a role. And um, Madrid um, Tourism Fair can be a communication platform, true? Yes, it is a communication platform. As I said, this is the communication platform between us and the Latin countries, Latin mm -hmm. South America. And believe it or not, Spain and Portugal, they still have a very strong influence and business influence in South America. Mm -hmm. You will notice that um, most of the big travel companies in Brazil or in Argentina or in Latin America, for example, you'll find that they either, their headquarters either is in Spain or Portugal mm -hmm. in, in many ways. So the only thing that we hope for that we would have direct airlines mm -hmm. from these areas to Egypt because simply you're talking about 300, more than 300 million people. You're, you, you started a, we started a project which is the path of the Holy Family. You have 300 million devoted Catholics over there. Mm -hmm. You have lots and lots of attractions. You can combine joint programs with countries around you. And I've tried this myself and it worked very well in the United States with Jordan, um, maybe with the Holy Land in Israel. You can raise the level of cooperation and this would increase the demand in Egypt and we can extend our own airlines from Egypt to South America. I feel really sorry when I see that other countries and in the Middle East, nearby countries, and they have direct airlines from these countries to them. And we take the leftover mm -hmm. over here. This is not the place for Egypt to be. Egypt is bigger than this. Egypt is a major superpower in tourism business, in mm -hmm. travel business. Um, Everything here is natural. It's not artificial. We, um, you have everything. You have the good, uh, the good weather, which is suitable for the whole year round. You have um, a very good infrastructure, I can say at the moment. Um, you have people who know how to treat the traveler. And this is very important. Yes. Um, sir, let's imagine our pavilion there. How should it be? It should be Egyptian. 
it should be Egypt. For it example, let me put my question in other words. Should we air all the time the mummies parade, for example, the uh, um, ceremony which took place uh, um, of uh, the uh, ram-headed uh, avenue in Luxor? What should we do, even without speaking, just to go around the pavilion? What should, uh, um, um, what should those visitors see to be attracted to Egypt, even without speaking to someone? Definitely, I would show these. Definitely, I would show the tourist attractions of Egypt with the parade, with the, um, with the uh, royal mummies parade. Create an exotic atmosphere. Because everyone thinks of Egypt, he thinks of God, Tutankhamun, the ancient pharaohs, back in time. I've heard it so many times. Mm -hmm. So create a magical atmosphere. Match with the mental image that the visitor has. Mm -hmm. Believe me, I was in Brazil in 2014, and all what, and they didn't even, lots of people didn't even hear about Egypt. And they kept asking me, asking me, is this in Africa? I didn't have any material right away. I have only like small clips, like 30 seconds, one minute. The people went crazy mm -hmm. when they saw this. They said, we can't believe that there's something that beautiful. Is that real? I said, yes, it's very much real. So when you walk at the bookshops in Brazil, you will find lots of books about Tutankhamun, about the ancient Egyptian antiquities. In Portuguese, which I believe not many countries speak Portuguese, I believe only Portugal and Brazil and three other African countries. Yeah, only yeah, mm. Mozambique, Angola, Capo yeah. de Verde. Mm. But books, lots of books, translated into Portuguese, and it's selling very well. The image is there. Mm. Give them the mental image, and especially that you're talking about something real. The parade, it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. The Royal Mummies Parade, this is a real event that took place. The whole world watched it. So... I and a new discovery is, and the missions which are here uh, to do so, and the renovation of, uh, um, of, uh, of tourist sites, and the inauguration of many uh, museums all over Egypt, not only centralized in certain places. How do you see these uh, steps also, sir? This is better than any kind of paid campaigns. Mm -hmm. I do not believe in paid campaigns anymore. This is a waste of effort. This is a waste of funds. Basically, we should concentrate and direct these funds in organizing big events like this. That is why I always say we don't have a funding problem. It's we have a management of funding mm. problem. It's all about management. The funding is there. I would rather spend these funds on organizing big events rather than paying a paid campaign because in the back of the mind of the receiver he knows that it's a paid campaign let me tell you something um, quickly mm -hmm. what started bringing back tourism in Egypt you'll be surprised it was the African Nations Cup in 2019 yep. mm -hmm. Nobody expected that it would have this impact. And I understand why the government insisted at that time in making, in, in organizing this in championship no and in no, time, in no time knowing that on the technical level our team was not prepared. Mm -hmm. But this was not what they had in mind. What they had, they wanted to show a real picture for the people living, coming to the stadium, the streets, and how safe Egypt was. This is what we call the real image. Over there abroad, the people will think when they see this, come on, what kind of civil war they're talking about? What's about safety? The people there are taking their children, they're taking their families, and they're going... And going to the stadiums in thousands. In exactly. Tens of thousands. You're seeing the people living their day-to-day -day life. So this had created a positive image in the back of the minds of the receptor. Mm -hmm. So 
the next year. So we made it that difficult for any African country which is going to organize the, these kinds of competitions after Egypt, the comparison is not going to be at all for the best interest of any other exactly. country with all my respect. And not only this, the whole world saw it with a positive image mm -hmm. in the back of the world. I'm not telling him, come to Egypt. No, no. That's Egypt. So the people had to think, it's safe. Why the? If you permit me to add to this, sir, uh, the step which was taken more than once by His Excellency Minister um, Khaled Lanani when he invited all ambassadors to join him while, um, while uh, celebrating new excavations or new discoveries, all those ambassadors, they already became ambassadors for Egypt into their countries. When they return back, they are going just to narrate what they have seen themselves on the ground. Yes, by all means. Don't forget that those ambassadors, because of their positions, they send reports to their Secretary of Foreign Affairs about the situation in, in the country which they, re which they live in, mm -hmm. about the security, about what's happening. So this has an impact too. It's very important. And I think it's a very smart move that we invite the ambassadors because according to the reports, that comes out of these embassies, it indicates the security situation mm -hmm. and it has a very big influence if their home countries are going to send travelers or put warnings or not. Mm -hmm. And also, I think that after such discoveries, the tourism map in Egypt already is enriched and many additions uh, are, are already there on the ground, true? And rectified. Yeah. As I said, our brand is not Sharm el Sheikh or Haggadah. Our brand, it's the pyramids. Tutankhamun, Akhenaten, Talil Amarna, Karnak, Luxor. In the 90s, in the yeah. early 90s and the late 80s, we used to have bus tours. Bus tours that used to start from Cairo all the way to Abu Simbel, mm -hmm. visiting Menia, and I can't say that the infrastructure was like today. No, mm -hmm. we used to stay in simple hotels mm -hmm. all the way until we get to Luxor and Aswan, and that's where we go to the Class A hotels. Mm -hmm. But in the available hotels in Menia and in Naga Hammadi, they, they had it mod modest, modest mm -hmm. hotels, mm -hmm. but they were clean. And the people were very happy because they're seeing not only the, the, the sightseeing, but also driving through the Nile Valley. One final question, sir. The Delta, places like San al Hagar. I mean, it's not only about Upper Egypt. How do you see introducing new areas in Egypt, new provinces in Rashid, in, as I said, in Sharqiyya, in Zazi or San al Hagar? How do you see moving um, throughout Egypt? Because I think under every stone we do have something to watch. I believe we need to create an awareness mm -hmm. about these sites first and promoting it and studying before making any programs. We should study the infrastructure, the travel infrastructure over there in the Delta. Mm -hmm. I believe that now we have a good infrastructure in we Upper do. Egypt. But in the Nile Delta, I think it needs a study. Because I remember, we, we used to do San al Hagar since a very long time, mm -hmm. since the late 80s and um, early 90s. But we used to sleep in Ismaili, because mm -hmm. the only province that had um, a decent, a decent. touristic mm -hmm. infrastructure was Ismaili. Mm -hmm. I think we used to sleep in a hotel in Fursan yeah. Island, mm -hmm. something like this. But it can be a start. El Fayum. Fay I mean, um, with all, of course, I am really in love with Upper Egypt, with Tun al Gabal, with Tal al Amarna. It's not only Itfu or Luxor or Aswan. But under every stone, as I said, there is something to see, there is something to enjoy in Egypt. Oh, yes. My, uh, am I exaggerating? No, 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 no. <laughs> absolutely, by all means. You're, you're, you're absolutely correct because basically you will find that there are lots and lots of historical periods represented and covered in every province. I mean, not many people know that in Fayyum, for example, has got a magnificent collection mm -hmm. of Coptic monasteries that dates back 
to the 6th and the 7th centuries mm -hmm. AD. Um, but still, it's about promotion. And it's about believing that Egypt is filled with great, nice, magnificent places and they deserve to be shown to the world. We are living in a, a country which is the gift of God to humanity. True? Absolutely, by all means. Well, uh, I really enjoyed my time as usual. You're always an added value to our programs. Mr. Ihad Kamil, our historian, researcher and tourism expert. Thank you very much for your input, sir, and have a very good day. Most welcome, thank you. Right, after the short break, we are going to turn back with more, so stay tuned.